Oh. Ah. You know what I love? Facebook. It's my favorite website. I post on it every single day. No, I don't. But what I do love is Mark Zuckerberg because, oh, he is a beautiful machine. Now, a few days ago, uh, the Zuck, he decided to release a video. It is an hour long, and I wanted to cover a certain section of it about gaming. I don't know if you knew this, but I am, in fact, a gamer, which means I'm also an alt-right Nazi. Now, I'm just going to talk about the gaming part, because, you know, that's relevant to me. Let's go. Now, if you ask people today what they thought the metaverse was, they would say it is a huge waste of time and that no one will like it. But let's see what the Zuck man thinks. A lot of people would probably say it was a Spider-Man. <laughs> But uh, the people who actually follow the space would say it's about gaming. Gaming in the metaverse is going to span from immersive experiences in fantasy worlds to bringing simple games into our everyday lives through holograms. Maybe you'll play old games in new ways. Does Mark Zuckerberg actually think he's gonna have fucking holograms of like chess? Not to mention, you know, chess, you can play it anytime online for free. Maybe you'll go head to head with players from around the world. It's like a shop. Some call it skill. Keep talking. Or maybe you'll do things that aren't even possible in gaming today. So, if you didn't know, ping pong is impossible in gaming today. No, ping pong has never been done. Any VR game that does it? No. No. Any 2D, 3D game? No. no. It's never been done. Hey Mark, down for a VR foiling sesh? Now this is more my style. Classic look. All right, nice. Oh, nice choice, Mark. Ready to shred. All right, here we go. Whoa. Whoa, hang in there, Mark. That's not good. Hit this section, boom. All right, backflip. <laughs> is this an actual game? Okay, so, uh... Based on this little bit of research I did, <laughs> this game doesn't exist and it never will. <laughs> it seems like it was just made for this video specifically, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, have fun, I guess, playing that. <laughs> oh, tube city! Oh, tubular! You wanna go again? Maybe later. I'm gonna need a lot more sunscreen, though. No, the fuck you aren't. You're in a virtual world. Well,. Gaming is how a lot of people are going to step into the metaverse for the first time. It already has some of the most fully built out digital goods and the most active creator and developer communities. <laughs> that woman looked scared for her life up until he sat down and then she put on her smile. I think someone has a gun to her head right now. And major platforms like Epic are working to build out the metaverse starting with gaming. Yes, Epic, the platform most known for their VR games and VR hardware. You know, it's it's not like a bigger DRM has made their own VR headset. No, 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 no. No, Epic. Epic Games. They're the ones you count on for VR. Now, Deb from our studios team is joining me. Deb, do you want to take us through some of the exciting games in the pipeline for Quest? You know, every time I see Mark Zuckerberg, other than the whole you know, jokes that he's not human, all that. Um, it seems like he has always been reading off a script. The same as this girl. I don't think any time you see Mugzuck on screen, he's speaking from his heart. I think it's all scripted. Absolutely. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to work with incredible developers, like Vertigo Games, the studio behind fan favorite Arizona Sunshine. Yeah, I have played Arizona Sunshine, and I gotta say, when it came out, it was a pretty acceptable shooter when it came out. Nowadays, it is probably the worst shooter on the market. I love Arizona Sunshine. That game basically got me and my friends through the first few months of the pandemic. No, the fuck it, it did not. I highly doubt Mark Zuckerberg has ever played a game in his life, let alone a VR game. 
That's awesome. If you enjoyed that, Mark, I think you'll be excited that we're partnering with Vertigo on five more great games from Deep Silver and others. Look at how fake all of her expressions and hand gestures are. She is over gesturing so much. Look at how fake she looks. I would not be surprised to find out that she is just an AI. <laughs> we'll share more about this lineup very soon. Nice. What else is coming? Well, the metaverse is constantly evolving. So one of the most important aspects will be live service games that launch updates and new downloadable content regularly. If you have played a game that was released after 2019, that's what you've played. Every single fucking game constantly releases updates. This isn't 2012 anymore. Like Echo VR, Beat Saber, Onward, Pistol Whip, and more. Uh, no, I cannot speak for the first and last ones, but Beat Saber and Onward I have experience in, especially Beat Saber. And I can tell you, every single update Beat Saber releases is hated by the community. At least the Steam community. They hate every single bug fix, every single song edition everything because every single time it breaks all their mods now me personally it's fine the mods will fix soon but hey i'm just saying the community fucking hates them and onward seriously onward as soon as onward was ported to the quest the steam version was ruined because it had to get downgraded to allow you to play with quest users onward on steam is dead. No one plays it on Steam anymore. Right now, there are 74 people playing Onward. 74. And you are trying to tell me that it's a big VR game. No, it, it might be big on the Quest, but for VR in general, Onward is a huge disappointment. It was very fun. Its all-time peak is 1,500 players on Steam alone. As soon as it was part of the Quest, they sunk the quality. They sunk everything we're focused on this a lot right now making sure games can build out active communities beat saber has a passionate community oh, i love beat saber so do i i can almost guarantee you mark zuckerberg has never played beat saber in his life and beat saber just passed a hundred million dollars in lifetime revenue on quest alone it's a great example of a game that keeps releasing fresh content They've actually been working on evolving the way that you interact with the tracks and feel the music. No, they have not. No, they have not. They have normal, one saber mode, no arrows, 90 degrees, and 360. There has not been a single game mode addition since then. Also, the team has been working on something really cool. Check this out. Wow. So you're telling me they put custom sabers into the game, things that modders have done for years, and what the community has been asking for for years. Congratulations. I wonder how much they'll cost. I can't wait to play this. And they keep partnering with incredible artists to release new music packs all the time. Did you play the Billie Eilish music pack last month? Yeah, a little more than I should have. I probably should have been working more on this metaverse presentation. <laughs> Again. No, the fuck you have not. I would not be surprised to find out Mark Zuckerberg has never touched a video game in his life. Well, they have a great lineup of artists for 2022. And there's one more epic surprise before the end of the year. So stay tuned. There will be a new music pack that costs $25 and has four songs in it. Hey. Okay. Have you played Population One? I mean, yeah, I love the game well, so much that- Yeah, fuck you, Mark. You let me talk, asshole. For those who haven't, Population 1 is a thrilling battle royale. Population 1. That's a game that I would love to talk about. Population 1 is near unplayable on the Quest 2, from what I've heard. I've played it on Steam, no problems. P pretty basic shooter. But from what I've heard about the Quest 2, it has like under 30 FPS consistently, which is unplayable. And let alone fucking VR. That is only possible in VR. That is not true. There's nothing setting Population 1 apart from any other Battle Royale game. It's got 24 players, weapons, grenades, 
health items, there's nothing special about it. I mean, there's the climbing, but that could be done in any game. Any game at all. Since its launch at Kinect last year, it has become one of the highest earning games on Quest and the biggest multiplayer FPS on the platform. When she says the platform, I hope she's referring to Quest because it is sure as hell not the best on Steam. You can have up to 24 people in at once for a match. Wow. We're super excited to keep launching big updates, like an all new autumn event later in November and a winter wonderland update in December. Just look at how fucking boring they make this game look. I've played it. I think it's a great game. I, I've had a lot of fun in it. I wish I had some friends to play it with. <laughs> but look how fucking boring they make it look. Let's skip this. Pretty generic. Population 1 has, uh, I think, weekly, maybe bi-weekly updates. So, yeah, just, you know, it's just adding stuff to the game. It's been done before. Okay. Here's something I know our community has been waiting for. Lay it on us. All right, this is a title from the Warp Frog team. This is the team that set the standard for VR combat physics when it launched on Rift in 2019. I wonder what game this is. Boneworks? Half-Life Alex? Huh, let's see. Let's see what VR game set the standard for VR fighting. That's right. Blade and Sorcery Nomad. Okay, I'll be honest, I was not expecting that. Blade and Sorcery is a great game. Um, yeah, nothing to say here. It, it's I have like 50 hours in it. I love that game. The built for VR medieval fantasy sandbox that pairs magic with melee is launching on Quest later this year. This scares me. Blade and Sorcery Nomad comes exclusively to Quest 2. I really, really hope this is not going to be another Onward. Because if it is, I will be very disappointed. I hope they can keep both versions of the game up to date with each other. And not lower the quality of the Steam version. For more gaming updates, look out for the 2022 Oculus Gaming Showcase. It's going to be loaded with news you won't want to miss. But Mart, I believe you have some news for us as well. Yeah, you know, I have to say, uh, it's really impressive to see this lineup come together over the last few years, but there is one project that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, this is one of the all-time greats, and we've been working for years to bring it to Quest. I'm excited to announce that the Rockstar Games classic Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is in development for Quest 2. Uh, this is probably the biggest announcement on here. GTA San Andreas is coming to Quest 2. Wow, that's... That's impressive. We'll see how they accomplish that. Will there be a Steam port? Fuck no. What the hell's wrong with you? Now, a lot of the most interesting games out there take advantage of how you can move around physically. Being able to look anywhere, move freely, it's just a fundamentally different experience from staring at a screen. This quality of being physically embodied and able to interact with the world and move around inside it, you know, that opens up some completely new experiences that didn't really make sense before on 2D phones or computers. Yeah, you can go fuck yourself if you have a console. <laughs> you didn't even mention them. <laughs> and that's all I wanted to talk about from the Zuck Man. Now, what do I think about the metaverse? I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know. I don't know how it's going to conflict with gaming. I don't know if it's going to be a good or a bad thing. I really hope it'll be a good thing. Because VR gaming recently has been heading downwards and it is all because of Oculus. Whether it's Onward, Beat Saber, uh, Population 1, uh, there's another one that they completely abandoned their Steam edition and just focus on the quest. It's all been going downhill. Since Steam VR is, you know, a big portion of VR gamers, I it's kind of scary seeing 
what they're trying to do. Kind of move everything to Oculus. I really hope that gamers will kind of push back and they will give in and allow their games on Steam. Or hell, even just have their own storefront just compatible with other VR headsets. I don't want to have to buy a fucking Quest 2 when I already have a Valve Index. Anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think, or don't, I don't give a shit.